Hey everyone, today I'm going to be seeing if it's possible to terraform every planet in our solar system. So if you don't know what terraform means, it means to transform a planet into a hospitable planet like Earth. So it's a planet where we could actually live besides Earth. So each planet is going to have its own challenges in being able to sustain an atmosphere and water on the surface. So let's give it a try, try to terraform each of the planets and see what it looks like afterwards and what it would be like to live on it. Okay, so we're gonna start off with Mercury. So Mercury is the first planet closest to the sun. It's very inhospitable. It ranges between extremely cold and extremely hot temperatures. So the reason for these high temperature swings is because it's very close to the sun and it doesn't have an atmosphere and it has a really slow rotation. Now it's been confirmed that water and ice are on Mercury on the northern pole. So once we increase the surface temperature of Mercury, it would unlock some of that ice that's on the northern cap of Mercury. So if we can melt some of those caps on Mercury, it would release water and organic molecules and hopefully those could be turned into water and CO2, which are both greenhouse gases or even methane. So and then if we can increase the pressure to around atmospheric pressure, then it will be able to contain some of that liquid water. Okay, here's terraformed mercury. You can see it has an atmosphere now, has oceans, a lot of oceans. I guess you'd call them lakes. You can see that even parts of it are habitable. You can see the city lights on the back. So this is what terraformed mercury looks like. Okay, so let's take a drive on our newly terraformed mercury. So the problem with mercury is that it has a lot lower gravity than Earth. So first of all, you can't get enough traction. Your car doesn't weigh enough to get enough traction. So cars would have to weigh a lot more or have some other method on their tires to rip onto the road a little bit more but you can get some pretty good air with not a lot of gravity. All right, now we come to Venus. So Venus is sometimes called Earth's twin. It's one of the most likely planets to be terraformed. It has an atmosphere, it's a little further away from the sun, but the problem is it's really hot due to a runaway greenhouse effect. So it's extremely inhospitable right now. Its atmosphere is basically made of sulfuric acid. In 1961, Carl Sagan proposed seeding algae on the planet Venus that would convert the dense clouds of CO2 into oxygen. So the surface pressure on Venus right now is 91 atmospheres. But if we were able to somehow use up a lot of the CO2 in the atmosphere, then we could decrease that. And once we use up some of that CO2, we could hopefully reverse some of that um, greenhouse effect and get the temperature back down. So now we can see through the atmosphere a little bit, you can start to see some of the texture of Venus. Okay, and here's what Venus would look like completely terraformed. You can see some civilizations living on the back of it here. Okay, let's see what it's like to drive on Venus. Now, because Venus is about the same size as Earth, it's going to be pretty much the same as driving on Earth. There's not gonna be much of a difference. So Venus would be most comparable to driving around and moving around on Earth. Okay, now Mars is the next likely candidate. It has a very, very thin atmosphere. It's close to the Earth, so it's kind of in the habitable zone. What's interesting about Mars though, and one of the problems with it, is one of the reasons that it doesn't have an atmosphere is because it doesn't have a magnetosphere, meaning that there's no strong magnetic core on Mars. For example, on Earth here, here's what the magnetosphere looks like. So the magnetosphere completely shields the Earth from the harsh cosmic particles coming off of the sun and cosmic rays. Now if we didn't have this, it would eventually erode the atmosphere off of Earth because basically these high moving particles would hit um, particles of the atmosphere and over a long time would cause it to have no atmosphere anymore. So even the gravity couldn't keep it on the Earth. So we may be able to make an atmosphere for a little bit on Mars, but eventually it would probably still erode away. 
At one point, the climate on Mars was probably pretty similar to Earth. It probably had a pretty thick atmosphere and warm flowing water. Now luckily there's carbon dioxide on Mars, and if we could release some of that carbon dioxide, we could increase the greenhouse effect, which would cause the planet to heat up a little bit. And once we heat it up, we could cause liquid water to form on there. Okay, and here we have a completely terraformed Mars. Okay, let's try driving around on terraformed Mars. So Mars is a lot smaller than Earth as well. It's not as small as Mercury, but smaller than Venus. So you're gonna have a lot less gravity to deal with. You're gonna have a problem ripping just like you did on Mercury. But again, you can catch some pretty good air as well. Okay, now once we move to the gas giants, even though what we're doing is pretty insane anyways, the gas giants are even more impossible. Mainly because they don't have a lot of solids on them. They're mostly composed of gas. They're extremely far away from the sun, so they could never be hot enough, even with greenhouse effects, to stay warm. But for fun anyways, let's see what would happen if we were able to convert a lot of that gas into solids, mainly silicates, onto the planets and see if we could get a solid surface and what it would look like with water on it. Uranus, Neptune, and then Pluto. Now driving on these gas giants, if they were ever to be terraformed somehow, is gonna be a problem because the gravity is so high, especially on Jupiter. Jupiter is such a big planet, it has so much mass, so the gravity is so high. So if you can get your car to move at all and it's not just glued to the ground, you're gonna have a hard time moving around and especially going up hills. Gravity by itself is gonna be pretty dangerous. You don't wanna drop something on your foot on planet Jupiter. Now Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune are gonna be pretty comparable. Their gravity is smaller than Jupiter, but still a lot more than Earth. So you're gonna have a little more problems with getting up hills and stuff. You're gonna have good traction driving around, but it's not as bad as Jupiter. And now Pluto. Driving around on Pluto is gonna be some fun. You're not gonna get a lot of traction. It's gonna be really hard to drive at all. You're kind of just gonna float around. It has barely any gravity. So if you go off a ramp, you're gonna go flying. Now you're gonna still have inertia, so you can hurt yourself when you're going at high speeds running into stuff, but gravity's not gonna pull you down as fast. So if you fall off a large crevice or a big pit, it's not gonna get you going very fast by the time you hit the ground. So here's every body in our solar system. We've terraformed them. You can see that the best looking one is definitely Earth here. Now there's been a lot of talk of terraforming Mars, but NASA came out with an official statement saying that there's nothing we could do in our current technology that could even begin the process of terraforming Mars. And another reason that terraforming is so hard is that it takes so long. Now in order to change the temperatures of planets, even if you're able to create some sort of greenhouse effect, it takes a really long time, thousands and thousands of years, to begin to even attempt to change any surface temperature on a planet like this. So this is definitely not something that we're gonna do in the near future, but who knows what lies ahead. All right, thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet, and hit the bell so you can be notified when my latest video comes out. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.